let's continue now with this problem guys we've seen exercise number one of latent heat it's very important you get the idea on what is latent heat or change on enthalpy for a change of phase and they tell you how much latent heat or they could even tell you how much heat is required to condense so what does condense means means from vapor to liquid this amount of toluene 15.65 kilograms of toluene vapor of course well they didn't need to tell you that it's vapor because you're talking about a substance that is going to condense the only substances that can condense are vapors at one atmosphere they are kind enough to give you the specific latent heat of toluene which is this one here one thing I want to tell you is that of course this is at one atmosphere if you wouldn't have that you will need to check out in the internet databases tables and so on in order to get this value here and let me tell you what else well essentially we're done to go so let's do it okay the heat required is essentially the change on enthalpy I'm going to suppose this is at one atmosphere it's constant so I can say that the change on enthalpy is going to be the heat that the system is uh, transferring or getting so by definition change on enthalpy is mass times latent heat and this latent heat they are giving me here specific latent heat 351 kilojoules per kilogram so it's that what does that mean is essentially at this pressure and at this temperature which we don't know but we know that in order to be saturated this will be at certain temperature 351 kilojoules are going to be needed to condense one kilogram and this is important because we're talking about condense condensing we're going to later see that this change is going to be negative guys this is negative but we're going to let that for the next slide and multiply this is done only for one kilo but we have 15.65 kilos so we need to multiply that and eventually you get this quantity right here which is negative because you're taking out your from high energy you're from high energy which is vapor has a lot of movement and so on you're reducing the energy and you go to liquid state and oops actually I didn't have the other slide but is it, it is important that this value must be negative guys why negative because you are your change in enthalpy is essentially the final state minus the initial state the final state is saturated liquid the initial state is saturated vapor and you're going to see that the enthalpy contained in a vapor is way higher than that on the liquid What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.